everybody. Welcome to another interview with the tie-dye mindset. My name is Greg Foster. I have luckily been able to contact the one and only Justin Biffer uh, to come join us and have a little chit chat about um, his realm of tie-dye and what uh, kind of goes on in that noggin up there uh, when he's uh, thinking about tie-dye and how it makes our worlds a little bit better. Uh, Justin has an amazing um, Instagram called Just in Color with underscores in the spaces. I'll put that up for everybody to see when um, I get a chance. And then he also just started uh, not too long ago an awesome Facebook group called HWI Tie Dye, uh, kind of a spinoff from the Tie Dye group. If you haven't checked that out and you're into hot water irrigation or you've never heard of hot water irrigation, um, I think I was really excited to bring Justin on because he's kind of been at that forefront, at least a uh, very visual um, leader, as it were, in, in that style uh, of applying dye uh, to, to fabric that uh, I was really excited because I really appreciate his work. I think it's really visually stunning. And those are the types of people I like to bring on the show, if you haven't noticed, are people that put out amazing art and uh, are really happy and uh, are willing to share a little bit about themselves and a little bit about their craft. So we're going to jump right into it. Justin, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. I am super excited. Uh, I've been uh, kind of giddy with anticipation the last few days once we kind of connected. And um, again, welcome. Um, so I just want to open the floor to you. If there's anything you want to say, you want to plug or anything like that before we dive into some of these questions. Um, not, not really plug wise. I don't know how to start off, but, um, other than, you know, my, my group H2I tie dye, I already kind of did all that stuff. So, I mean, let's just kind of get into it. You know? Cool. 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 As you can see, both of us are wearing tie dye. Um, this is kind of our mindset. If you have, uh, dabbled <laughs> in tie dye at all, uh, you've probably become consumed, obsessed and addicted like the rest of us. Um, you know, I, I feel personally that tie dye is one of those art forms that uh, allows you to share um, really that sort of inside spirit of color and brightness and intrigue, if, as you were. Um, and that's kind of how I express myself in tie dye. What is it about tie dye for you, Justin, that that uh, that speaks to the rest of the people out there? Um, well. Tie dye for me, like my what I try to put into my shirts is is, is my style. It's my style from when I was um, doing art in like high school and stuff. Like I was a, a big graffiti artist, cartoon artist, so I used to do lots of that graphic high color of slime drips and flames on, on my bubble lettering and and really elemental with my with my art. So I definitely try now that I can with with what I've learned and now that I can like actually add uh, my style from drawing into my shirts um, they get becoming more and more recognizable and personalized to me and uh, most of it is stuff that um, people haven't necessarily seen before and I love to do that you know I love to keep pushing the next oh wow I haven't seen that I haven't seen that I haven't, well that's a new one holy crap and so I like to uh continue to do that and it makes um i try to find inspiration everywhere to do that too so yeah i certainly can appreciate that you know uh that is i think the sign of a true die artist is when you're able to create something in a specific style or in a specific application that people haven't really seen yet you know it's a little twist on the norm be it in dye placement, color layering, uh, arrangement, composition, what have you. And I think that really elevates uh, the dye artists from just your crafter hobbyist to somebody who's really into pushing themselves, pushing the craft and, and getting something uh, unique and, and awe-inspiring onto a piece of simple fabric like a t-shirt or a tapestry. So, uh, Again, another reason why I wanted to get you here, because <laughs> you do have a great unique style. I, and I must say, I love the way that the drips have been coming out lately. That has been a really fascinating um, piece. And I got to say, you know, those lava drop inspired ones were really cool. Oh, yeah, um, you're getting one too. Um, though, and the thing is, is with, with my designs, 
I, they, they, they continuously progress. So I'll make a shirt and it'll be like my prototype, you know, and I'll look at it and it'll be whatever the design is. And I'll look at it and I'll see what about it that I liked, what I can change to make it better, uh, things to what I want to make it more realistic or level or layer it, all those things. So I get a prototype shirt and you'll see a design slowly progress through shirts and shirts. And at the same time, because I continue to do the same layout format, I'm practicing it, practicing, practicing it, that gets into it as well. And you know that, you know, practice makes better, but. Practice does make better. Yes. So I also try <laughs> yeah, to no, make sure I, I that. Would, I would fully agree. You know, I've seen the progression through what you've been posting, uh, especially over the last few months. And just like you said, you know, as you get something down uh, in your process, you're able to take that next step in, in, in tweaking it a little bit to either shift, you know, the placement or the design or the shapes. And it, it really is quite evident specifically, I think, because you have such a um, uh, distinct style of dye application where it, you know where your dye is going to be at the end of your application, which I want to get into in, in a little bit, um, specifically that uh, the hot water irrigation technique. But I really want to jump back a little further. You know, you mentioned in high school, you were doing some graffiti art with drips and your own sort of style. What was it in your in your background or, or what pushed you towards tie dye? You know, what was that kind of where, when and how uh, moment in your life that that moved uh, maybe from paper into, into the dye world? Um, so I guess, I mean, I've always been into the counterculture, uh, you know, I mean, I've got my med medical card, you know, I, I smoke, what, you know, I'm legal, you know, that's all that matters, you know, so, <laughs> but, but, but um, um, the counterculture has also added to my style a lot more because of, you know, how the counterculture is. One of my biggest inspirations before I got into tie dye was glass art, and still is, is glass. Um, heady glass in particular. The wigwag is from glass art. The, um, mm -hmm. I have, this is an 80, uh, this guy, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little, a little wigwag right there. Yeah. All right, so he makes that famous with his zipper stitches, and then here's another little example of a wigwag. You know, the, so, so glass oh, art yeah. is where the wigwag came from. It's, and the whole word wigwag is putting a zigzag in a circular shape. So that's where the wigwag, it's a zigzag, in a circle. So that's where the word came from. But um, so that's like a lot of big inspiration is glass art. And I almost got into it with glass before tie dyeing. I took some lessons, made some techniques and some fun stuff. But at the time, what it takes to get into glass, the way I wanted to do it, when I get into something, I, I go pretty hard. And I didn't have uh, over $5,000 for a torch kiln and sets and all that stuff. Right, right. So it, it is big. And I knew that if I was going to do it, I wasn't going to waste money on a beginner torch and do all that stuff, you know. It's, it's hardcore. So um, I did go into Michael's or Hobby Lobby one day, actually looking for a, a bead glass kit that they sold there that someone told me about. I was like, oh, how'd you get started in glass? They're like, oh yeah, they have this bead kit. Go check it out. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I looked at the bead kit and it was like 150 bucks. And I was looking at it and I was like, oh, this is stupid little torch table crap. I'm not going to do anything with this. So I kept walking around and I saw some tie dye bottles and I was like, you know what? I bought a three color tie dye bottle set and one shirt and squirted it on a crappy looking spiral and wore it the next day. And people were like, oh, you made that? And it was horrible. But I was like, yeah. And I was like, I think I'm going to make some more. Oh, make me one, make me one. And I was like, all right, 10 bucks. You know, so <laughs> it, it started off and I was just having fun squirting. And then, uh, you know, as it does, you get a little bit more intrigued and you start looking at research, like what's out there, what, what, you know, because your mind sometimes has to be shown the possibilities for it to trigger a, a, a light bulb of what you can do with it, you know? So of course you, you look into the videos and I watched up Mr. Tie Dye. And, um, and then uh, there was one person in particular that uh, let me know, you know, it's always a little, little random people. It's like, I don't even talk to this person anymore. It was one person who was like, kind of like, let me know that the whole tie dye world is secretive. When stuff. It was like, oh, was I what professional dyes were and soda ash chemicals and all those little things that like you don't really know i didn't even know about the groups at this point you know mm. i had no facebook groups or anything like that that i that i knew of um and then i got the professional dyes and it starts looking really good and i was posting in um uh mad elephant in the basement it was like the only tie-dye group i knew of at the time and <laughs> john do you know who john Krabowski, Krabowski is but by, by name, like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he was posting in there, and I thought he was like the king of all kings because I didn't, you know, it was he was posting amazing stuff. So I, I looked at, I was envious of his, and he was doing hot water irrigation. So I started looking into that, and of course he was helpful enough to give me the the, the basic information uh, of what I needed to get done to start creating shirts that looked like his. You know, that I was getting the same results, and he was also a big inspiration to a, a lot of his work that he was doing until I could start figuring out my, my own groove and, and, and being able to implement my own style. So he was definitely a big part of one another reason why I'm very freely with my knowledge that I have now is because he was so willing to uh, part stuff that he's been doing for years, you know, with no question. So, and then he's not the only one, um, but it, it's, and it's those things that I feel like if people did more of, if someone like, someone shows me has like no problem like giving me stuff then i'm going to be freely wanting to give it to somebody else down the road and it's this domino effect of keeping the art form alive by having as many people jump on as possible that's how something becomes mainstream you know it becomes mainstream because so many people are doing it and the more people whether it's the more people that get out there and start doing it and going oh my god you know it's it, that's how it builds it's how it grows it stays alive I couldn't agree with you more. And you answered probably about a half a dozen of the questions I wanted to ask you in that oh. <laughs> last answer. So kudos. Um, yeah, I mean, the the jump that I've been seeing uh, just in, in, in popular culture and frankly, the popularity of these tie-dye groups is is nothing short of legendary, you know, from it being that sort of underground, very secretive uh, counterculture um uh, style of art, it's turning into a, you know, everybody has access. And I, th I personally, I see good things and bad things in there, you know, uh, and um, I think it comes more from an objective observation rather than anything else, because I can put my own die artist spin on it, or my own crafter spin on it. But I, I think at the end of the day, it's really better for everybody to have this free access, or even if you have to pay a little bit for a tutorial on some super advanced stuff, I get it, you know, people have earned, uh, you know, through countless hours and, and effort, uh, have earned a little bit of, you know, need for recognition on what they've done. Uh, but at the same time, like, like Paul Kenny has been really forthcoming with how he came up with his style. You with uh, your tutorials that you've been doing on Facebook with the hot water irrigation. Um, and then you really have to dig deep uh, on YouTube and, and stuff and spend some time really digging, sifting through some of the, the, the random stuff and some of the really good precise videos uh, to really learn a lot of those crafts. And, you know, people like you, Mr. Tie-Dye and Paul, who have, have been very much at the forefront, at least um, visibly on social media of sharing that knowledge, uh, I think is an amazing thing uh, for the craft. And it has certainly elevated my own um, abilities um, and I'm like, I think I'm kind of like you when I, when I get into something, I get into it whole hog. I want to dive deep. I want to figure everything out and then be able to apply it. And sometimes I get ahead of myself. And I think a lot of crafters, if, if you don't agree with me, I think a lot of crafters out there kind of get ahead of themselves of why doesn't my art look like, you know, Justin's who's been doing this religiously and focused on one specific style and doing it over and over and over and over and working all those kinks why on my first or second attempt doesn't it look perfect like his i watched all his videos <laughs> you know so i see not only the knowledge is is important but i think just as just as or if not more important is the actual application of that knowledge you know you, you can learn everything you possibly want on a video, but if you don't apply that knowledge, you're never going to be able to, to, to see any progress. Um, so I, again, applaud you for putting that knowledge out there. And if it weren't for people, uh, you know, uh, that were sharing it with you, sharing it with us, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. And yeah. in that shift into that sort of pop mainstream culture, uh, which is funny because you can see a lot of stuff out there. I mean, heck, I was on uh, a website for like office supplies and they had, uh, they had tie dye shirts on there. They weren't the greatest, but there they were, you know, so exactly. my office supply store is selling tie dye. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, like you know, there's like you know, there's the main not not main, there's the 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 Walmart tie dye and all that stuff that's out there. You know, I feel like that that is the um, what you call fads that go in and out, but the art form will always be. You know, and I didn't know really know it was there until I got into it. It's always there. People don't know it's there unless they're looking for it. But this will never go away. You know, it's the little fad of the Walmart tie dyes that are in the stores right now that might go in and out. But um, this style of expression of that that, pe that people are always going to want it, and the more intricate and crazier the tie dye gets, the more people uh, seek after it and bigger it'll get. You know, so I feel like because of, I mean, you know, tie dye when it broke out back in the '70s and stuff like that was awesome, and now the, the craziness, how much crazier the things can be done with it, is why again it's being brand by so much harder. Um, and I only see it progressing. I don't, I don't feel like going out anywhere and stuff like that. No way. Do you see that the Walmart sort of that sort of basic, uh, as you put it, fad uh, getting out there? Do you think that that dilutes uh, the, uh, the the value of what some of the real artists are doing out there? Do you think that that kind of devalues? No, I, I think if anything, it's actually it, it can be. I mean, it's a double edged sword. It's a, it's a good thing because it can kind of get people intrigued because when they start seeing tie dye fashion in the stores, they can kind of get intrigued by something better than that. You know, uh, that uh, that initial again, seeing it and the light going on in your head. Um, so I think that it's good in that nature, kind of throwing it all out there. People who look for this style of art, they're not going to find it in there. People who look for art, people who buy art, whether it's a shirt or a painting or stuff like that, those aren't people who are, who are buying stuff in Walmart. So we are to a certain clientele, and that's in order to uh, progress in your art and make the best art you want you will only want to to uh, appeal to that clientele so there's it's not a dilute there's two different areas perfect I, I i you know i couldn't have said it better those those consumers and it you know and, and with my hot sauce company it's very similar it's like the people who want tabasco can go to the grocery store and buy tabasco people that want an art you know an artisan developed flavor they come to the makers they they yeah. search that stuff out and it's very like you say people go to galleries to buy art they don't go to the the home store you know where you buy mattresses and you know you can buy that 30 dollar piece of wall hanging but would you really call that art no it's it's yeah. it's there to visually take over a blank wall and i agree that you know the tie-dye from walmart has its place but the true art the true artists the true art connoisseurs are gonna you know search it out and thank god for the internet now that we're able to right. find the means you know very easily of finding true right. artists versus you know maybe finding somebody from you know six degrees of separation i'd be one broke artist if i didn't have uh, facebook <laughs> and all my business you know i mean seriously it started there it continues there you know, when I posted those steelies in, in the, the Grateful Dead groups, that was the first time I ever posted any tie dye in the day for Grateful Dead group. And it almost hit like 3,000 likes, and that was it. I was done. Mm. People, I, I, I got six, eight, eight weeks backed up. And that's one thing that, okay, well, I stopped taking orders after the steelies. I got <laughs> insanely stressed out uh, about that and stuff like that. So it, there was good and bad of it, having orders, the, the security of it, and you know, taking these deposits and all that. Um, but then on the back end of it, it um, kind of uh, speed bumped me in my progression of my inspiration. So if like, I was on, in, on the spot inspiration, I'm like, damn, no, I got to like pump out five steelies this week. You know, I don't have a couple hours to do something in my head. So I did stop doing those and I still post the steelies that I'm making. It's still in the back orders. So it's, I mean, so there's people out there kind of getting a little angry and kind of like ignore the the inquiries on Facebook because those are just inquiries if they really want to talk to me they'll message me you know yeah. so like I'm right. not going to waste all my time on the like I, I could be sitting there tie dyeing instead of being on my phone all day so but I still want to you know show people my art you know and that's what the groups are there for so um you learn some things in the business about orders I still do take orders I but I don't take deposits I tell them like I'll put you on a list and you know and stuff like that and I don't really need to deposit because if I make the shirt for some reason you don't it never happened to me but if you don't like the shirt I'm gonna sell it you know so I'm not worried about the deposit thing and all that and um 
it's just, um, so I did take a little fun out of it, you know, even like work, if you can find what you know, you love, you're not working. Right. And I know you're not working with your sauce. You're not working with your tie dye. You're loving right. all that. Yeah. You know, I do the same thing. I love it. So yeah. it's not work. Some of it is grueling. You know, I just tried doing this guy tied this Kenny style for the first time. We're going to oh. go back to do some liquid. I don't know how, what do you think? This is my first one. Does it look it all right? Looks, I, mean, like, I saw your post the other day. It <laughs> looks pretty good. Right. It, Pretty tight. I, I was wondering if you were going to do an HWI on it, but I would definitely recommend following Paul's advice on how to dye those. Uh, yeah. That the, the post dye application of the soda ash really makes them pop a lot. Yeah. I mean, almost, I mean, considering what you're doing with the HWI, it's very similar, I think, in the chemistry. So I think you're going to see a brightness and a, and, and a kind of vibrancy that you get similarly in the, in the HWI. Yeah, of course. It's like that last minute set in before you yeah. rinse out. But I'll tell you, doing those, I've done a few Kennys. Like I've got one right here that I did. I was going to wear for my next interview. Uh, these things are, it doesn't show yeah. up the fake background. These things are the most insane things to tie up. I've got arthritis in my thumb. Yeah, I mean, I, I sliced myself up. I almost bled. Thank God I didn't get any blood on the shirt. I got a little drop. So I was like, all right, all right, let's chill for a second. <laughs> I'm bleeding here. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And I can see why, you know, that sh that style has become uh, kind of like that holy grail. That That is a style that's very, very, I found to be very difficult to master, not only because of the time it takes, but the placement of your knots, the placement of the dyes. There's like Josh Cohen, his stuff is just amazing. Oh, yeah, he, he plays with that. But but back to you, the reason yeah. why we're talking <laughs> to you um, so tell me, um, you mentioned somebody had shown you hot water irrigation and, and you, you know, you learned the wigwag through the glass pieces. What is it specifically about this style that, that is really kind of, uh, latched onto your brain and, and keeps you pushing, pushing this realm rather than going into liquid or ice or, or a lot of the other directions that you could possibly go? So when I first started, yeah, I started like with everybody, liquid for the most part, you know, I liquid diet. And then when I first, and I found out about ice, it was, hot water irrigation was the last thing that I found out about. But um, with the ice dye and liquid, I was so impatient. And it's funny because a lot of people will say my comments, he's like, oh my God, he's got the patience of a saint in there. It's like, I have patience when I'm working on something. I cannot patiently wait for anything. So I didn't have to, I'd be putting ice on a, a shirt and going to sleep, right? And be like, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll wash it out tomorrow. You know, let, it, let it sit 16, 18 hours, whatever. I'll be waking up in the middle of the night dreaming about that shirt, opening it up in my dreams. I couldn't do it. You know, it was too yeah. much. So, so when I found out about the hot water irrigation, I was like, oh, dude, I can do this instantly and wash them out. This is great. And not only that, because of John uh, Kubrisky's work, uh, it looked amazing. And I right. wanted to get that, that, that detail of depth. It, it had this amazing uh, depth look of layers, like you can go in and out. And that's what hot water irrigation to me was giving that I couldn't get with liquid because liquid just kind of like blends in with each other and you don't get those like uh, I, I, dimensional uh, fade-ins that, that you get from the hot water irrigation. Right. So um, he's the one, I asked him like, you know, uh, what, what he uses and it was a pump sprayer. So I went out and bought a pump sprayer and still wasn't sure, like, you know, the whole way of spraying it really hard in my head was like, that doesn't seem right. Everything's going to go everywhere. So I was like pumping real slowly and just letting these little drops fall out. And I was like, why do I need a pump sprayer to do this? I'm just going to put hot water in a, a bottle and, and, and squirt over dye. So my first hot water irrigation shirts were just straight up scrunch, half fold scrunches. And I was putting the dye on and I was just doing both sides with the hot, like 150 degree water banging them out, washing them, rinsing them out. And they were coming out bold and all that stuff. And then I finally got up to, to like the guts to be like, all right, I'm going to spray a shirt in my tub, you know, with, with the sprayer. And it was like one of John, he goes, he does his own ripple. It's literally just the half fold and like two mandala pedals, you know, like one up this way and one down that way. And it looks like a ripple. That's his ripple. Um, it, that fold was the first one that I did with the hot water irrigation. And I learned you do not do shirts wet you know you have to do them dry that was my first everything was a learning 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 yeah. as much as he would give me i learned more from just saying i'll get do a shirt and if it screws up it's a learning experience yep. I, if i'm paying five dollars right now for this experiment that's what it's going to cost and boom into the books so uh continue to do that and um and then what i would do is i'd post these uh, fails or non-fails and to the, he, his, his group is the one hour 
uh, the one hour tie dye, that's his. And so um, I would post in there and then ask little questions and I'd get feedback, you know, that's again with groups is awesome feedback. Um, but then there's all these variables because different sprayers come out at different speeds and different pressures. So you have to understand like how hot your water has to be in this sprayer if it's coming out like this. Cause so all of these different things I'd find, what's the best nozzle for spray. And I went through all these different, I've got like seven sprayers in my, <laughs> block. whatever. They're all like 10, 15, I've never paid more than $20 for any of the sprayers and now I have parts. So whatever. So, you know, it's it, the, the experiences are it, you, that, that I paid for all that stuff. They, it, it didn't really pay for any because I sold every shirt that I ever made or I kept it and have fun wearing it or I gave it as a gift. So I didn't actually pay for them if I look at it that way but I paid for it in time. Um, but yeah, the, the, and then I wanted to share my experience of my, the, the, the hot water irrigation because even before the live feeds, I'd always post like little picture sets. You know, um, one of my first like dyes that like kind of hit it in the groups was the stained glass dye. Uh -huh. I did like the little X mandala or the diamond mandala and it had black little linings around the sections that created, made it look like stained glass. And Eric put that up on the, that was my first feature on the tie dye group. And, um, and then I was like, oh, who wants to see how this shirt was made? So I posted like a 15 picture tutorial about it and it blew up and people were asking questions and I helped out. And then from there, it was just a continuous, um, you know, I'm going to post process pics and stuff like that and answer as many questions as possible. And, and, uh, it just continued, you know, and then of course when the group, so, and I, but then now I'm getting a lot of people saying like, oh, dude, you're so stupid for, or for, you know, giving out all of your intellectual property. You could be, you know, making money on it. And then um, I, I do see where they're coming from with it, but they don't understand the non-monetary value that I get from doing all that stuff. Uh, Cause they don't feel that, you know, they're only looking at like, oh, how much money can we make off? So uh, if anything, it, it's given me more opportunity and more windows and more inspiration because I give out to the community and they give me back with their own styles. And I go, Ooh, I can, you know, that's kind of cool. And, you know, so, so it's this domino effect that I give to you and, and you might not know it or you do because I will credit somebody that, that uh, you've inspired me back. And, um, so there's a whole bunch of it that comes with it, but I am going to do like, you know, something small, like on the next live feed that I do in my group, I'm just going to say, Hey, if you guys want to do a little donation, you can do my PayPal and then I'll send you guys a little sticker pack with my logo and stuff like that. So it kind of like silences some people like, Hey, you know, I made some money in the live feed. Chill, chill out, you know, and, 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 and then I still doing what I'm doing. Wow. Yeah, man. It's, it's amazing how this world has, has, really gotten to a point that that you know there is uh so many different ways to go so many different ways to express yourself professionally craft wise all the influence of people out there uh you know i think that's really what captivates a lot of people to this to this indus industry to this art form my dogs are running rampant behind me right now. <laughs> They're kind of distracting. You were saying earlier about trending, you know, about things trending. Yeah. You know, something say something trends more when more people know how to do it, right? You yeah. know, it can't trend if people don't know how to do it. And one person doing it's not going to trend something because he's the only person doing it. The ripple, Josh Shep's ripple, trended because he made a tutorial and he sold it, and a lot of people bought the tutorial and it blew up. Um, the, the wigwag, you know, it, it trended through the, the goods, you know, everybody who was doing the wigwag before me, I credit the person who created the wigwag, the actual wigwag pattern, his name is Kevin Elmore. He did it first. Um, he goes by a squeezable jam on Instagram. Mm -hmm. the, his dye placement is impeccable and it is intricate and out of this world. He does question marks. He does the slime. I originally saw a slime drip shirt from him that also, you know, inspired my style of slime drips. So he, it, it was the, he came up with it first, but at the same time, there was, there was um, uh, Josh Hudson and um, Fletcher Sigmund that were um, doing it at the same time. So they had like a little, uh, if you look, you can actually just see straight on their Instagrams, like who, who posted first, you know, right. and like, that's really the best way I can look at to say, like, you know, give credit to maybe someone's design, whether it was you're getting credits because you're showing everybody, you know, a certain way, or you're getting credit because, you know, just because you came up with the design or, you know, you're getting credit because you're, you're showing people, there's two different things, you know, right. but um, I guarantee you, nobody knows Kevin Elmore came up with the wigwag mm -hmm. because he doesn't really 
throw it out there like hey this is my design and because you know there's been people like yo you know it happens you know but he's low-key and, and, and he enjoys the fact that, that what the art form is and he kills it on his own stuff and but yeah he's the creator of the wigwag um but uh the hot water irrigation wigwag is what everybody for the most part is trending because that's what they're learning those yep. guys aren't going to show them and they don't have to, you know, they, they, they spend a lot of time learning what they've learned, mm -hmm. um, whether they had someone show them or not. Um, it's up to them. So I've had people, you know, show me. And at the same time, I've learned a lot, but I can show my technique, but I, I already, the results are already in, like there's only a couple people who took onto it nicely and there's still going to have to be about a hundred shirts more before they, their stuff really, really looks good. Yep. And then everybody else, like, yeah, they're, they're crafting and, it, and it's, it's good. And I see some creative stuff and that, that inspires me, but the, um, the, 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 the lack of attention and all that other stuff, that's just not there yet. It, it's, you're not going to, the artist, I can't show you the artist you're the artist and um so like you know it's art until it's being taught and now it's a craft mm, you know there's craft and there's an artist so yeah it's a, it's there the wide is very the the line is very wide i think between crafter and artist where yeah. uh it really is up and, and and it really is the eye of the beholder in my opinion yeah. you know you can have somebody who does it on the weekends or does it with their kids or just you know throws a spiral together and splashes some dye and consider themselves a crafter, um, you know, but what truly makes an artist is, is really up to, I think, um, up to the beholder. Now you can yeah. put in the argument, okay, well, an artist is somebody who works at their craft who, you know, refines their technique and spends all this time. Well, that could be a crafter too, but just a very accomplished crafter, you know? So I think trying to, put us put everybody into one category or the other in and of itself is inherently against I think the tradition of tie-dye you know oh. and it's funny I say funny it's it's uh, more amusing to watch those conversations and in my in my conversations with more accomplished dye artists it's it's amusing to see how uh, people react to um, that delineation between the two uh, you know, some people are very um, convinced that they are an artist and everybody else is a crafter. And, you know, be it from a, a, a place of ego or a place of uh, trying to keep the value of their work high. I get it, you know, I'm not there to splash in anybody's parade. And, um, you know, like me, I'm kind of, I think I'm in that gray zone between crafter and artist. I. I emulate a lot of the styles out there and I'm doing it professionally for, for like logo t-shirts and I'm making money from the ones that I sell. But at the same time, it's not, not like I'm trying to change the world or, or, uh, you know, developed, you know, I'm still, I'm still at the point where I'm still learning a lot of different styles versus finding one and just sticking to it and attacking it. And, and, and then, eventually making it my own. And I think, uh, you know, I, I like to do what I like to do, you know, whatever inspires me when I sit down at the table and I haven't found that one design yet. There are a couple that I'm, I've been perfecting in my own realm, uh, but I haven't found that one design where I'm just like, I have got to sit down and nail this one because I'm kind of like that dog that sees a squirrel. It's like, Oh my God, hot water reaction. Oh my God, Kenny style. Oh my God, this. Oh my God, that. And yeah. there are great tools that I've picked up from each style that has aided me in finding better technique, you know, better uh, dye chemical recipes, better application uh, for brighter, more vibrant colors. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's still a game to me um, that I love to play. And I think once I get tired of it and I think, you know, as you, you sort of talked about the trends, you, you get the people who are all excited about it and then they try it a couple of times, they realize, oh, this is a lot more difficult than it seems. You, you kind of get that, that, that self uh, pruning uh, of the masses trying to perfect that. And I have yet to self prune as it were. 
I don't yeah. know if that's the best term, but I'm going with <laughs> no, it. I think one, one, one thing I did with the live feeds that the next one I'm going to change up is like, I, I went a little hard on people. Like I went like, you know, I'm going to do this zigzag with bag this and all that. And you guys are going to watch like the next one's going to be a simple layout. I mean, they, uh, they kind of are, but like they need to get the basis down. Uh, I, I made them kind of jump over their own heads by like seeing what I did and say, okay, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Even when I said, don't make this shirt, you know, just take what you learned here. But um, yeah, I have to do basics and um and I think that's more important than just trying to, because that's what the tutorial is for, not to like, you, you guys see my bangers, but anyways, you know, the tutorial is to show you how to do it properly. So tell me, Justin, is there anything that you've been working on as far as application of the hot water irrigation or dye placement that, that you haven't shown us yet that is going to be kind of like, uh, oh my God, Justin is amazing, or are you just kind of sticking to your guns right now and, and, uh, continuing to perfect your style and getting into teaching it and, and things like that? Well, I mean, I have a couple collaborations in the works. Uh, one, one, one of them is with uh, this girl, her, her, she goes by uh, Dying to Batik. Mm -hmm. She does mm -hmm. dopest Batik uh, paintings, you know, like uh, mushrooms or this really dope face moon one. So I want to incorporate style on style, you know, or, or, or like, uh, uh, medium on medium. So I have a couple shirt, four shirts. I'm sending her some drippies and, and a wig wags. She's nice. getting those. Paul Kenny has one of my shirts right now in his hands that he's going to put some of his Kenny style on. So, and, um, that's also what's getting me into getting back into liquid. You know, I want to play back into liquid and maybe a little bit more, um, the ice dying and hot water is kind of same. So I want to play in liquid, get back into, um, mastering it enough to incorporate both into on my own shirts. Uh, liquid sections, hot water irrigation sections. And then I'm also going to, I mean, the reverses that I've been doing in my own zips and stuff like that. I'm definitely going to play with those a lot more. I like that, you know, because with hot water irrigation, it's, you can't, it's hard to get black, black, you know, it just, it's hard. So the reverse allows you to get that black, black and still throw some color in there. I'm just trying to figure out how to get it as white as possible, whether I have to like dip and boil it four different times i'm going to try doing that you know how many different batches to see if i can get it white white because i mean my colors do come they just look a little different than white white you know but um it would be cool to see how white i can get a reverse sure but well, Justin, um, this has been awesome man you yeah. i know you are a wealth of knowledge uh of your style and your application um you come across as a really mellow chill dude and I appreciate that. And again, your willingness to come and, and talk with us today is uh, greatly appreciated. Hopefully those who watch the video um, get a little bit into that psyche of yours and are excited to follow you and hopefully uh, partake of your art. I definitely need to put in a request myself because I do love your shirts. I'll be honest and and I, I hate to be a fanboy, but... <laughs> uh, the steelies that I've seen you put out the first time I saw one of your steelies, I'm yeah. not a big, I, I love the dead music. I'm not like, I wouldn't concern myself a deadhead. I've yeah. been to a few shows. I'm not a deadhead, not a deadhead either, but I, I, you know, shows, I was like, if I like their music, the steelies were never really my thing until yeah. I saw one of yours and I was just blown away. I mean, yeah. the way that you sort of paint on, uh, oh, yeah, the, that, that mixed medium, you know, it's like, how can I, do what I, with, with what I knew at the time, the best possible. So the first two steelies I did, I had kind of gave the psychedelic scrunch in the eye area and nose. Mm -hmm. And on the third one that I did it, it came out looking weird. So I decided that on that shirt with the fabric paint that I had to go in on it and it blew up and it went hard. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to say, this is going to be my first hundred dollar shirt. And I said to the first person who ordered it, how much? I, and I said, it's a hundred dollars. She ordered two of them. I said, all right, that's it. Boom. So that became well, once, once that in my own mind, put me in a rank. If I, once I could get uh, selling a hundred dollar shirt, I put myself in the middle of my own. And I continue to do that with my own little ways of like, I like to compete with myself, put myself mm -hmm. in own ranking, mm -hmm. you know, like, okay, I, I get these, the comment, you know, these uh, from everybody, you know, it works amazing and all that stuff. And then I'm like, well, now I need to see how amazing my work is to other amazing artists, or I need to see, you know, so that's how I try to rank myself and, and yeah. continuously progress through those motivations. 
Cool, man. Well, I can't wait to talk with you more. Uh, I got a lot more questions, but we're coming up on a good amount of time here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank you. time with us today on the tie-dye mindset. Hopefully people have uh, gleaned a little info into our, our realm here in the tie-dye world. Um, you can follow Justin and I'll put everything in the description. You can follow Justin on his Instagram and Facebook pages. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to our little channel here because we love having people seeing, uh, you know, more of the mindset rather than specific technique. Because I think uh, when you get to know the I, artist, I know that after I watched, I swear to God, after I watched those videos, it upped my, it myself getting in the head. This was a, already after most of the videos I watched in the last like two months or whatever. But getting into the head of understanding a little bit of that and the backgrounds of it, it definitely upped my game for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we can talk technique all day, but like we, we've we mentioned, it, it's practice, 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 practice. But to understand who the artist is, I think is is really important to be able to appreciate what it takes to, to come uh, and uh, honestly, I think, enjoy the art. When I started studying art in, in college, when I really did more of the history, the biography, rather than just uh, the artistic expression study, when I really started to understand what the artist was going through, what their situation was like, the, the appreciation for what they were putting on canvas or putting in sculpture or whatever it was, uh, it really changed for me. So again, that's why I'm doing these videos and these interviews is to get to know you guys a little better, make you guys a little more approachable to the community at large. Not that you need any help, Justin, honestly, you've been great uh, on your videos and I look forward to more of your, your tutorials. I just love watching them, not only for the entertainment factor, but you, you're a wealth of knowledge. And, and uh, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, my man. Thank and uh, yeah, I'll be in touch soon. We'll get more time on the on the waves, right. and we'll go from yeah. there. All awesome. right, man. Thank you so Peace. much, Gary. All right.